online community has two distinct groups those who watch from the sidelines and those who actively participate but how do you turn passive observers into engaged members understanding the difference between your audience and members is key to unlocking the full potential of your community and that's what our next panel is going to be about audience versus members distinguishing your community's core to moderate this panel it is my pleasure to invite ankush jisuja to this virtual stage our in-house marketing expert senior manager team marketing at grizidi ankush is a master at executing marketing diverse marketing programs that drive pipeline creation while also overseeing global marketing operations and support functions he specializes in identifying market opportunities by monitoring industry trends and competitor strategies the stage is all yours ankush thank you uh, thank you mahak for that uh, wonderful introduction i'm pretty excited uh, you know to be here as a part of this panel and moderating it across and you know uh, understanding and exploring the key difference between the community audience and active members um, mac you won't believe that you know understanding this uh, can help us to convert spectators into active and loyal members uh, that too while you know we build upon the uh, community strategies to enhance more engagement uh, well thank you mac uh, Furthermore, to deep dive into this topic, I like to welcome our panelists. Uh, let me call in our first panelist, uh, Corina Yona, Global Community Director at UiPath. Uh, Corina has been, you know, driving community strategies for last twelve years. She has been a mentor and a coach to startup, uh, helping them to build communities effectively. she has been also an advocate for uh, ai and automation technologies for developers and learners uh, uh, thank you corina for joining us uh, today uh, my pleasure okay uh, and i'll also like to call in our second panelist uh, andrew mishlov senior advisor in digital customer success and community led growth uh, andrew's focus on aligning community initiatives with corporate goals Uh, and his innovative approach of transforming communities into growth engine has been known to us all uh, welcome andrew uh, welcome to the panel <laughs> thank you good to be here the same here great so without wasting any time um, you know let's jump on to our first question which comes out of our session topic uh, panel topic itself the key difference between uh, active community members and passive audience members um, so how you know understanding this difference is important and can be beneficial um, for managing the communities effectively uh, uh, and you would you like to go first about it sure sure appreciate the opportunity um welcome everybody uh good morning good afternoon good evening wherever you might happen to be in the world Um so yes Ankur thank thanks for the question and it's great to be here with uh, Karina as well. Um you know I I look at one kind of key distinction between the two different groups um your active members and your your engaged members is uh is really focusing specifically around the actual levels of engagement um that they are participating in. I mean there's something that I've always looked at and it's pretty standard sort of internet rule of 1% uh where you have 1% of your 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 audience and this does apply to communities so uh especially in the early stages you know the internet rule of 1% so you have your 1% audience is your your active members people who actually participate in different activities whether that's content con- contribution or answering questions or attending user groups or you know participating in other forums uh, even submitting ideas to the community so that that's your engaged member the people who are logging in on a regular basis um and then you have your 99% who are much less active they they're very kind of more passive members or sort of lurkers consumers of content not necessarily contributing to the vibrancy of the community um 
you know, but that's, it's not just black and white like that. You have people on different sort of scales of activity. Um, there's, there's something called the 99, 90-9-1. So 90% would be your, you know, your lurkers, your, your consumers of content. Those who are coming for, you know, whether it's entertainment purposes or simply to, to learn, but not necessarily feel that they need to contribute and give back. Then you have your 9% who may have some sort of light levels of engagement. Maybe these are your members that are starting to convert from your passive to your more active members and they're starting to engage in light levels of, of activity. You know, maybe those acti maybe that activity is being prompted by something that they saw that was inspiring. Hey, I, I learned something. Maybe I want to give back and become and meet some of the people perhaps on the community. Mm -hmm. You know, and then you have your one percent who are your active members. Um, so I think those are those are some of the kind of key distinctions. There there are other things you may want to look at, like what's their motivation? Why do they actually come to the community in the first place? So whether that's to give to other people to get more to get more back, perhaps, or they're just looking to come again for consumption of content. Um, and you know, there's. Understanding these distinctions is very important. I think we're going to get into that a little bit later, but I wanted to give Karina a chance to, to provide her response as well. Sure, yes, even I was keen to know Karina. Uh, so 99 and 1. Uh, that's 99 it. and 1. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, Karina, what's your opinion? Yeah, I'm so happy that Andrew added the, the structure, the mapping for me just to, to challenge some perspective and some angles on the topic. So totally agree with uh, what Andrew just shared. I think uh, when it comes to, to our members and lurkers and the active ones, it's also about the quality of the interaction that we expect there. And that we can think that there are members who are um, contributing or adding to the engagement, but in reality, maybe they are upset with something. They are angry with something or maybe the, the experience, it's a bit messy, like it's, it's a noisy community. So that, not all the time, what I'm trying to say is that not all the time we should hope for people to, to be active, to talk. If they ask the same question that was asked and maybe was pinned on our forum, maybe there is something that is missing there in how we interpret the onboarding or the code of conduct or the, the community etiquette. So there are some other aspects that we need to, to consider when, when we talk about um, they're engaged, they're contributing. Let's check with what they're contributing. It's, it, it's uh, validating things, adding perspective, that's good. If they're just maybe creating a bit of disruption, repeating things that are already there, that may be something about us to to consider a better user experience and with that maybe the that kind of engagement will decrease and we will see that in the analytics but maybe it's a much better journey for so many others it's a smoother experience for so many others so in that sense i think it's important for us to to check especially when it comes to to learners people who just start like in my case the community that i run it's in learners, passionate people, professionals into, into automation. So many of them just need to acquire that skill, right? So it takes some time to get, like they need to be part of that 90% before they, they, they move further. So it's very important for, for us to maybe to see that they are in a learning track and they have multiple touch points with us. So that's a good sense for us to say they are there, they are not active in the sense of contributing, but they follow the steps for them to continue the, their journey. And when is the right time for them, they contribute in their own way with small steps or bigger steps, depending on their motivation, as Andrew mentioned. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, yeah, I think I think there's also something you, you know, you pointed out too is the, um, you know, just just understanding why there is a say, you know, the, the, the the majority are not participating. Why does that take place? And um, maybe it's the experience. Maybe it's that the content is not speaking to them directly. Um, maybe you're not building the right tool. You're not building the right experience. It's a really good quote um, from a from a movie 
and I think this movie was from the '90s, Field of Dreams. Mm-hmm. And it was there was I think it was the voice that he was hearing. Um, if you build it, they will come. Mm-hmm. You know, but that's not necessarily the case with community. The communities want the members need to feel ownership. They need to feel that they are creating the experience that they want, and you're just there to help facilitate that and to provide them. You know, to to take the inputs, the feedback that they give you, and then to be able to turn that those insights into action and to create the experience that's going to benefit the, the you know the majority of the community members. So I I had a slide years ago that talked about if they build it, they will come, um, and that's exactly what you want to do. You 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 as the kind of moderator, the owner of the experience, needs to be a good listener. And to be able to make sure that you're serving the needs of the greater uh, percentage of, of your members, um, and continuing to do that, it's not just one and done. It you, you're going to continue to receive feedback and be able to act on those insights and act on that feedback that you get to continue to mature the experience so that you can attract more active participation in the community. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that that creating that comfort and experience is also very important. But uh, uh, any any of you uh, maybe Corina or Andrew so when when we talk about these you know base numbers which which we were just talking 99 and 1 so is it is it something you know generic across all type of communities because Corina was talking about the learner community you know where people would be more indulged for knowledge consumption uh, part right so uh, is that one person as, as a base standard across or uh, is it something which varies from a type of community you move into uh, how, how about just two cents over that? I can have an opinion. So I usually these kind of statistics goes for uh, brand communities, tech communities, professional communities. So communities, communities at scale. When you talk about communities where it's more about more intimacy or sensitive topics, or you really need to feel that level of trust, it's more about being in smaller groups and to have that commitment from the others. So these kind of percentages don't make sense in that kind of groups. Maybe they, they can make sense if we know we are part of a larger network where we support each other. But then I am part of that smaller group where I know maybe I know everybody. I know their names. I feel safe to share some other aspects. So this uh, these statistics, they work really well when it comes to large communities, scaling, thriving communities, especially for, for tech and mm-hmm. different professions. Yeah, and, and I think within those larger communities, there's going to be um, almost like sub-communities of people who are very, very, you know, maybe it's maybe it is a tech community or a product community, product-based community, and you have like a f- specific feature where maybe there's, there's even in instances where you have Hey, we're trying to engage our more active users or champ, you know, brand champions uh, to discuss new features, and we want to get some lot, you know, some feedback. So we're going to invite a subset section of our community into a sort of private area, forum, or discussion, or group, or something where you would want them to participate. So that's still a community. But it's a community of more active participants, so that you know you are expecting that the you might flip it. So ninety percent active participation, ten percent or nine percent less active, and one percent not active at all. You know, but then on, as a as a whole, yes, maybe the 90, 10, 99, one would apply in that case. So you can. So I don't think it's like a you know one sort of key one rule. I think it's just it, it, it varies within communities and it varies as a whole as well. Great, great. Uh, I think I think that gives a, a pretty clear amount of idea. Uh, you can't generalize, generalize the term uh, or, or the numbers at this point of time. Perfect. So, uh, you know, um, we have a very limited time, so I'll not pause it between. Uh, we'll move to the next uh, question, uh, which I have in my mind. <laughs> Uh, because uh, there are a few more things which are coming to my mind while we are communicating, but I'll, I'll you know, first uh, try to cover our next question. Um, that is, uh, uh, Karina, maybe you want to take that first. Uh, that you know, what strategies uh, do you encourage to convert, uh, you know, uh, passive audience into active participants in any community? And then, uh, you know, in continuation to that, uh, 
uh, if we would recommend you know some strategies how do you measure the effectiveness of those strategies uh, what are the parameters for you to measure yes it was something you know which worked across <sighs> yeah a lot um so <laughs> something that uh, that we do and it's like a principle in how we work is that we try to go for many ways for people to contribute like for them to have choice and to play on their strength so we are fortunate enough to have a, a large community and quite with complex programs so there is a way for anyone to contribute like if you want to be on the spotlight you can be a speaker if you want to host events you, you can be a chapter leader running events if you want to contribute with product feedback we have tools for that if you want to support on a forum you can do that many many ways to for every talent in a way that can be uh, in a community every talent to be supported and encouraged so this is one aspect that we try as much as possible to, to mention like you want to write a blog article or you want to be in a video spotlight or you want to be in an event up to you how you want to contribute so that helps a lot for them just to understand that there will be the way that they prefer now once the way it's there it's also about the opportunity and when the opportunities come i think it's important also not to overwhelm them only with the best of the best or just to have all time leaderboards so we try as much as possible to have some monthly rewards on our forum or to have some challenges some hackathons um and also programs that take a year for you to to con continue to contribute and to be recognized for that but what's important is for them to feel that today is 1st of october so whoever wants to start contributing on our forum they can do that and they have a chance to win because they are just an equal with somebody who contributed till now so this idea that everybody can contribute everybody can can share their expertise it's something that uh, that we we encourage a lot then it's also about not counting only on the high the ones with high expertise like you need learners who went through a similar journey some months ago or a year ago so for them also to be mentors for the others and to try to to share their knowledge in their own way we don't put them on the bigger stage because maybe it will be too much for them but we find ways for them to start to feel comfortable and to start their contribution early in their journey with that like we like these are ways for us like as i said monthly awards challenges different learning paths to take uh branded swag helps a lot when recognizing them and making them like oh i'm incentivized to contribute different uh, certifications uh, to or vouchers to get certified into our technology uh opportunities to be on spotlight or to to have exclusive sessions with some product leaders so we try as much as possible to incentivize them in that sense and then for us to to measure through different badges that we have or at the end of uh, the year when we start preparing the the next batch of uh, most valuable professionals the mvps to see how many got nurtured in the process so I tried to cover all your questions, but I'm sure Andrew has even more to add. <laughs> yeah, that's so uh, risky to speak something over this. Yeah, no, no, you, you covered you covered most of it, Karina. I think we um we we talked about this last week and how we had our kind of answers that we were we were planning on covering certain topics, and then it completely changes once we get to the day of the event. And I just you know your some of your your uh, thoughts prompted some ideas in my mind and. Um, you know, a couple of things that I think are important to engaging these, you know, you, you want to be able to personalize sort of like the onboarding process if you have an onboarding process, because you do have different people that have different strengths, different reasons for being there. Um, it's not a one, you know, one size fits all kind of scenario. Um, so some people may feel more comfortable being up on the big stage at the conference, or some people may feel more, you know, uh, empowered to do something else that sort of plays to their strength. So providing opportunities for people to engage in the ways that they're comfortable engaging in is super important. And I think that that partially comes with just experience, but also comes with like 
a good sort of, hey, community onboarding experience. This is what this looks like. These are the opportunities. This is how you can get engaged if you're interested in doing that. If you're not interested in this, maybe you're interested in something else. Um, so I think another kind of sort of in, in line with that sort of that thinking is that you want to have fairly easy barriers to entry. So by, you know, helping them to whether it's, hey, get your profile set up, um, add, a, add a photograph, a photo of yourself so people know, introduce yourself to community members or maybe the community moderators can introduce the new community members to others. So having those like low and easy, somewhat easy barriers to entry, I think would be really important. Um, don't forget about your active community members, you know, leverage them to help um, get the, the rest of the community members, the, the, new, the new members or the more passive members, get them to up to speed, get them participating in stuff. So, you know, leveraging your people who are more active. Um, and then I think the last but not least is sort of content curation making sure that the content speaks to the different types of users, the, the more active, the more past members, um, so that they feel that they're getting value from the experience. I think that if people feel that they're getting constant value from the experience, they're going to, at some point, going to want to start to contribute and give back. It's like, hey, I don't want to be taking, taking, taking. I want to also kind of give to the, to the um, success of others. Uh, mm -hmm. So in certain terms of measurement, uh, of success you know the engagement metrics are obviously going to be super important in being able to kind of track and measure that across time uh to see see what your conversion rates look like from passive to active making sure that your your retention is high that your churn rates are low um and then from time to time doing surveys you know maybe surveying different groups of audience different groups of, of members whether it's active members new members passive members etc uh, so just in, in paying attention to the insights that you're, that you're capturing from the metrics. Yeah, uh, I think that was a very valid point. Uh, yeah. I, yeah. I saw a time thing pop up, so sorry I was rushing through that to make sure we have time for the for the audience to ask questions. Yeah, well, I think you covered most of it. So uh, if, if, you know, I have to summarize what, what you both were uh, uh, focused upon to measure or the conversion of, you know, uh, non-active to an active members primarily the type of experience you are enabling that the personalization into the experience at every step is important uh, to uh, encourage people to be more engaged into the community than the gamification with all those sort of scorings and you know uh, localizing further subcategorizing into communities right the idea management somehow uh, plays an important role here uh, uh, to involve people uh, I, I think very, very well uh, articulated by you both, you know, um, uh, all the effectiveness which is required to uh, convert, uh, you know, members as an active uh, participants here. Uh, uh, you know, uh, we, we already have questions pouring in uh, from our uh, audience, but uh, this is something which uh, just caught my eye. So I would like to pick this up first, uh, you know, with your permission that uh, uh, someone has asked that, you know, the common mistakes organizations make when they try to convert audience into engaged members. How can they avoid those mistakes? Uh, uh, I think before that is, what according to you are those mistakes, you know, which organizations or a community moderator generally make uh, when they try to uh, make members, convert them into active engaged members and then how that can be avoided as a second uh, I, I can share a few, uh, it's not necessarily that I went through those things, but I think we were in an inflection moment when it's easy to go on that path. And uh, we were maybe mindful in that moment not to take the path. So one aspect is to, to want things too fast. And with that, you move uh into uh like one example is like you move into a commercial relationship with your members too early in the process what do i want to say with that like there are people and it's easy to think that you really want them to put a product very fast on the market maybe right to create content and do that and if you immediately jump into paying them or so I'm not saying to be against paying, like commercial is commercial, but when it's commercial, somebody else talks about those things. It's about community contribution. So counting on the intrinsic motivation of people, 
still counting and making sure that this, this, this exchange happens because they want and they see value in contributing in the community is more important than just moving fast with a new feature that you want to be posted already and they will take from their professional time to do that. I want to stay on that community time that they have as much as possible. That's why I insist a lot and we insist a lot with go for their talent. Like don't make it an effort for them. So that's one aspect that I think can be a bit of a mistake and you ruin a bit of the, the community value if if you jump into, into that. Um, and maybe, I don't know, uh, build things too fast as a program and not really getting to interact with people. Like try to hear the stories first, try to understand who they are before you think you have a solution and you have a program for them. Yeah, that's, that's a great point. And I, I would add to that um, by saying that, you know, we, we are building community and, and with the purpose of serving the community members. Um, and we can't forget that the members are the most important thing. It's important that we understand why the community members are coming to this community, why they're here, what, the, what do they value most um, and providing them with those opportunities, whether it's connecting with others, maybe it's just the lurking, the lurkers, and they want to consume content. You know, we hope that over time they'll contribute to the to the vibrancy of the community and feel a sense of um, feel, feel a sense of ownership and belonging. Um, but not forgetting that we've got members of all different types. They're there for all different reasons, and we need to understand that, and we need to not sort of push our own agenda. Uh, it's really ab about, you know, serving the community members uh, most importantly and making sure that we are providing value to all different types of members and making them feel uh, included in the community and making them feel valued and making them feel that we, you know, we appreciate them being there at, at, in whatever capacity that is right now. Because that could change and hopefully will change over time, but just um, not trying to push the you know, push them too hard to, to do something that we want them to do, but they are not necessarily ready for it. No, uh, great. Uh, I can't agree more with you both over this point. Uh, with Mehak, you know, coming back on the screen, that's an indication that we are already uh, at our timelines. Uh, there are a few more questions which we were <laughs> not able to take, but we make sure that, you know, uh, uh, we have all those answers reached up to you people, uh, after connecting with Andrew and Corina. You know, we'll have those questions discussed with them. I would let you definitely, you know, uh, back with the answers. Uh, thank you, Andrew and Corina. Really appreciate, you know, um, you throwing this loud uh, at light at this topic. I think that that's, that's we can talk for an hour or more about this, but uh, we have our own limitations. Really appreciate you both taking up time and, you know, joining us for this session. Um, and for our old audience, uh, I like to request that, you know, since we are talking about the um, engagement into the communities and active members uh, do check out our booth and launch area where you know we have our own line of products around uh, idea management and gamifications uh, you can know more about those with our experts in the launch of the booth area with that i'll hand over uh, to mehek thank you andrew again thank you karina i appreciate thank it. you bye thank you all thank you ankush so half of my job was done by ankush himself by thanking all our, all the speakers for this clearly distinguishment between community audience and community members and defining each of them in detail. But I believe all of them have collectively raised the energy of the event to a whole new level.